What should President Obama's birth certificate have looked like after being scanned into a computer? In order to find out, we stripped away the document's green background, leaving only a black and white document. Next, the document was photocopied onto green basket weave safety paper. The document was then scanned into a computer and opened in Adobe Illustrator. Once inside Illustrator, the file is as it should be. It has one layer and one link. As the document is enlarged, we'll notice two more characteristics that confirm it was produced by scanning a paper document into a computer. First, the texture of the paper can be seen underneath the ink. Secondly, the image noise is consistent throughout the document as we scroll from top to bottom. So to recap, we have one layer, one link, and noise that is consistent throughout the document. So why didn't the birth certificate file released by President Obama behave the same way? Can the anomalies in President Obama's birth certificate be explained by the use of OCR software or perhaps by the fact that the document was optimized prior to being released. We'll explore these possible explanations in a moment, but first we'll take a closer look at President Obama's birth certificate. We've already seen what is supposed to happen when a paper document is scanned into a computer and opened in Adobe Illustrator. Now let's use Illustrator to open the PDF file of Obama's long-form birth certificate that was posted on WhiteHouse.gov on April 27th of 2011. At first glance, the document appears to have only one layer. However, a quick glance at the links palette indicates that there are many layers. Nine layers to be exact. As we turn each layer on and off, note the information each contains. As layers 1 and 2 are turned on and off, they appear to contain no information. As we will see later, nothing could be farther from the truth. Keep your eyes on box 20, 22, and the date stamp at the bottom of the page as we click layers 4, 5, and 6 on and off. Layer 7 contains the state registrar's stamp, layer 8 most of the type, and layer 9 the green safety paper background. Perhaps most troubling is the way the date stamp and the state registrar's stamp at the bottom of the page can be moved around the page in their entirety once they've been selected. This immediately caught the attention of Maricopa County Sheriff's investigators. You'll recall that when a paper document is scanned into a computer, we typically see an even level of noise throughout the document. So, does the PDF file released by the White House pass this test? No, it does not. As you can see as we scroll down the document, noise is not evenly distributed as it should be. Those who have attempted to defend the document's authenticity have relied primarily on two theories. One, that the document may have had optical character recognition software applied to it, or that because the document was optimized before being released to the general public, these anomalies are expected. As you will see, both theories are easily debunked. One of the theories put forth by those who are trying to defend the authenticity of Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate is that the many anomalies contained in the document are there because optical character recognition, or OCR software, was applied to the document prior to its release by the White House. What is OCR software? And what evidence is there that this software was or was not applied to President Obama's long-form birth certificate before being released by the White House? In order to determine whether or not OCR software had been applied to the file released from the White House, we put it through a three-part test. First, can fonts be recognized in the document? 
Secondly, can words be searched for in the document? And third, can text be edited in the document? Before we look at Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate, let's take a look at a document that we know has had OCR software applied to it. This document started out as a piece of paper. It was scanned into a computer and then had OCR software applied to it. As we can see, fonts are recognized in the document, so it's passed the first part of our test. Next, we'll see if words can be searched for in the document. Let's try the word constitution. And there it is. The document has now passed the second part of the test. Now we'll see if text within the document can be edited. Indeed, it can. The document has passed all three parts of our test. We can state with 100% certainty that this document did have OCR software applied. Now we'll put the file released by the White House through the same three-point test. First, we check to see what fonts were identified. As you can see, no fonts were identified. Therefore, the document fails the first test. Now we'll search for a word that we know is in the document. It would seem that no matches were found. The document therefore fails the second test. Now we'll see if we can edit text in the document. We can't even highlight text so that it can be edited. The document therefore fails the third test. We can say with 100% certainty that the document was not put through OCR software. If the use of optical character recognition software isn't responsible for the many anomalies in Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate, what about optimization? We'll explore this theory in our next video. Optimized, a fancy way of saying that a file has been drastically reduced in size. So, was there a good reason for optimizing Barack Obama's birth certificate before posting it on the Internet? Given the anticipated number of downloads, yes, a smaller file would be beneficial. Now for the big question. Can optimization explain the many anomalies in Barack Obama's birth certificate? In order to find out, we'll once again perform a little experiment. You'll recall that we took Barack Obama's birth certificate, removed the green background, then photocopied it onto green basket weave safety paper. Next, we scanned it into a computer. This time, we also optimized the document. We'll now begin a series of comparisons between the control document and the one released by the White House. Let's start with a look at layers. Optimization produced 45 layers in our control document which is to be expected with a document of this complexity. The document released by the White House had only nine layers. Now let's look at the green safety paper background. As we look at this sped up version of layers in our control document being turned on, you'll note that the green background layer is divided over many, many layers. This is to be expected as a result of the optimization process. The birth certificate released by the White House has 100 percent of the green background on the ninth and final layer. As you have seen by looking at the control document, this is not an expected result of optimization and implies strongly that the green background layer was created on a computer and inserted behind the other layers as the last step in the computerized document creation process. And now we'll look at the registrar's stamp and the date stamp. The date and the registrar's stamp are contained in part on layer one. I'll lift layer one off of the document so you can see. There you go. Part of the date stamp, part of the registrar's stamp. Now the date stamp is also contained in part on layer seven and 
on layer 27. The registrar stamp, in addition to being contained on layer 1, is also contained on layer 6. Note that both stamps took some of the green background with them. Suffice it to say that the date stamp and the registrar stamp in a document that has been optimized cannot be moved around the document in one piece at will. Now let's look at the Certificate of Live Birth released by the White House. As you can see, both the date stamp and the registrar stamp can be moved anywhere you want in one piece. No green background going with it, lifted cleanly off the document. As we know from our previous example, this is not caused by optimization. Now let's look at the white halo issue. As we look at our control document, we can see that there is no white halo effect caused by optimization. Even as we zoom in and look closely between the letters, we can see that the white halo effect does not exist and therefore cannot be blamed on optimization. As we zoom in on the document released by the White House, we can see the white halo effect throughout the document. And while we do not know what caused this white halo effect, we can state with confidence that it was not caused by optimization. There are numerous ways a white halo effect can be manufactured within Adobe Photoshop. The exact way that this particular effect was manufactured is not important. All that is important is to note that when you scan a document into a computer and optimize it, a white halo effect is not produced. In conclusion, we can state that while optimization can result in a layered document, the layers found in Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate are very dissimilar to what we'd expect as a result of the optimization process. In short, optimization doesn't explain a single anomaly in Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. Not a single one. Over the last 10 months, there have been numerous attempts to defend the authenticity of Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate by offering up speculation and conjecture. Unlike those who defend the authenticity of the document, we were not willing to merely speculate or engage in conjecture. Instead, we created our own control document and scanned it into a computer. Many have falsely claimed that optical character recognition software was applied to Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate in an attempt to explain away the document's many problems. You'll recall that because fonts were not recognized in the document and text could not be successfully searched for or edited in the document, we concluded with 100% certainty that OCR software had not been applied to Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. Now we'll apply optical character recognition software to Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. Once we're done, we'll apply the same three-point test to Barack Obama's birth certificate. This time, we should see drastically different results. First, we'll look under the Properties tab to see if fonts were recognized. As you can see, they were. Next, we'll see if we can search for a word in the body of the text. We'll choose the word live since we know that it's there. And as you can see, the word was quickly found. Now we'll see if we can edit the word that we found. As you can see, once a document has had OCR software applied to it, you can edit text with ease. Many have also incorrectly suggested that optimization is the panacea for all that ails the long-form birth certificate. But optimization produces layers very different from the layers found in the long-form birth certificate released by Obama. The document released by the White House had only nine layers. 
our control document had 45 layers after being optimized. All attempts to replicate the layering effect through optimization on the long-form birth certificate or a document of similar complexity have resulted in considerably more than nine layers. In instances where a low number of layers has been produced, the documents being optimized have typically been rather simple in nature, as when author John Woodman used a page from Little Red Riding Hood. In addition to the number of layers being different between the long-form birth certificate released by the White House and our control document, there is another very important difference regarding the layers. As we turn on all 45 layers of our control document, you'll note that there seems to be no rhyme or reason to the organization. Contrast this, if you will, with the long-form birth certificate released by the White House, where layers 4, 5, 6, and 7 all deal exclusively with stamp information. Are we to naively believe that this is the result of a randomized computer optimization process? The fact that the registrar stamp and the April 25th date stamp appeared separately and independently of each other on separate links drew our attention to the fact that they resided on separate independent layers. The fact that the date and registrar stamp were linked and layered in this fashion brings us to the conclusion that they were brought in from unknown sources and placed in the long-form birth certificate document released by Barack Obama to give the appearance of legal certification. Also troubling about the April 25th stamp and the registrar's stamp is the fact that both stamps can be lifted cleanly off the document and moved about the birth certificate in one solid piece. It should be noted that none of the self-proclaimed computer experts claiming to be able to replicate the layers in Obama's long-form birth certificate has been able to replicate this effect with the April 25th date stamp and the registrar's stamp. This document is far too problematic to discuss all of its issues in one press conference. Please note that the issue we are most concerned with is that of the date stamp and the registrar stamp which appear to have been imported from unknown outside sources. For if the date stamp and the registrar stamp which are placed on the document to give it authenticity are fraudulent, then the entire document is fraudulent. Was Barack Obama's Selective Service card really received by the Post Office on July 29, 1980? What exactly is the concern with Barack Obama's Selective Service registration? We reviewed multiple Selective Service registration cards. These are just four examples. Notice the date stamps on all four contain four digits for the year decade marking. This is a copy of the date stamp from Barack Obama's original Selective Service registration card that was made available for public review. These photographs illustrate a standard PICA stamp that was used during the 1980s era. The photograph on the upper right shows the PICA stamp compartments and stamps that needed to be changed out daily, monthly, and yearly. The picture on the bottom right is an example of a loaded PICA stamp. These five examples are the expected results from the PICA stamp used by the United States Post Office. The two examples on the far left are from the same post office where Barack Obama supposedly turned in his Selective Service paperwork. Per the United States Post Office, it is policy to use a stamp that contains four digits for the year. The stamp below is Mr. Barack Obama's and it contains only two digits for the year. Why? This photograph shows a PICA 2008 year stamp and a PICA 80 stamp. Since there are no 1980 PICA year stamps available, the 2008 was cut between the two zeros and inverted. This inverted cut stamp creates a similar effect. 
which closely resembles the one seen in Barack Obama's Selective Service Registration Card. This illustration shows what the 2008 PICA stamp looks like when cut in half and then inverted. In conclusion, as you can see by looking at the side-by-side -side comparison below, there is a clear difference between the authentic stamp shown on the right and Mr. Barack Obama's on the left. Look at the distance between the zero and the innermost circle of the stamp. Look at the distance to the right of the zero and beneath the zero. The reason the numbers 8 and 0 are out of position on Barack Obama's registration card is because when the numbers 08 were cut away from the year 2008, they were not cut squarely. Or perhaps put another way, the person who cut them cut too close to the 0. So when 08 was turned upside down to become 80 and put back into the PICA stamp, it pushed too far to the right. In what is becoming a clear pattern for documents that are essential to the documentation of Obama's life narrative, the Selective Service card isn't just forged, it's poorly forged.